Christmas and stuff like that. And he's to avoid these celebrations. And when we have, obviously, the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the same day, these kind of celebrations are blended together. And that's how we obviously have like, figures like the Easter Bunny or Easter eggs, and people do all sorts of things on these days to commemorate not just Jesus, but their own kind of celebrations, right? But that's not what we believe. We believe in something entirely different, something that holds a lot more meaning to us because Easter, as, for us Christians, it holds a chance of hope and forgiveness for us to move on with our lives and be better people, right? And that's what we're going to go into today. So I want to ask you again, why is Easter a Christian celebration? Jesse, can you tell me why Easter is a Christian celebration? Why do we celebrate Easter? Do you know why we celebrate Easter? Jamie, do you know why we celebrate Easter? Christy, why do we celebrate Easter? Mm-hmm. Hey, why do we celebrate Easter? You know why we celebrate Easter? Because Jesus told us to remember his death and his resurrection, right? When Jesus died and he rose up, it was kind of like a sort of symbolism for when Jesus died, he didn't just go on the cross and just die like the regular guy. Because you have to remember that Jesus isn't just a normal human. Jesus is God in the same way as he is human. He is God in common. So when he did die, he didn't just die just like that. He didn't just go to heaven or something. He went and bore all the sins of the past, the present, and the future that will come up. And he held on to all of this and he paid the ultimate price, his own life. He gave his own life so we can be forgiven for the bad things that we do in our own lives, right? And that's why it holds so much meaning to us, because that's why it's kind of the good news, the good hope. It's good news because we find out that even though we do as many bad things as we want to in our lives, we can still be forgiven and redeemed, because Jesus died for us. That's what's so good about it. No normal person will just give their life so the entirety of humanity can be safe and just live whatever lives they want. Jesus died not just for us. He died for people that do bad things as well. He died for everyone in the world. Think about it, right? There are so many people that do bad things out there. And they just ignore the fact that Jesus died for them, right? Jesus died to make sure that they had a chance, at least a chance, of living better lives and doing better things for themselves. And when they do realize that what they're doing is bad, the door's open for them, isn't it? When they want to come back to God, the door will always be open for them to turn around and change their lives. That's why Jesus died. He died so all of us can have a second chance at our lives. Because you also need to remember that we're born into sin as humans. When Adam ate that apple and Eve ate the apple, all of us humans, we just, it's in our nature to do something wrong. It's, we can't be perfect. Monday forth, we were not supposed to be perfect, right? So when Jesus kind of died, and he resurrected that held another form of symbolism. It's the chance that, well, it's the idea that we can be reborn spiritually and not just physically. When like Jesus rose up from the dead, we can also sort of rise up from what we once were. Instead of being born into sin, we can now be born again and live a new kind of life, right? Do you understand that? Or is that a bit tricky? Does everyone get that? So we're born into sin and live our lives and we realize what we do is wrong and then we turn to God and then from that point we can be born again and become something else, right? And this is where we start our true Christian lives. And this time, does anyone know this time point is called when we decide to start following God and make that decision? 
the initiation of the It's also going to be baptism. Baptism is when a person is put into water and they come out and then that's when God starts acting in them. Think of baptism as like, let's say you had a job, right? And you want to start working for a company and you have to sign a contract to work for the company, right? You sign a contract to work with the boss. Think of God as the boss and the baptism as the contract, the engagement. And you sign it yourself. It's your own decision. And it's a good decision, isn't it? Because it's beneficial for you to keep working, to earn money, to live a life that is kind of what you want, in a sense, in that context. But to live a life, the Christian lives we want, the baptism is a good idea, a good decision, a good stage to go. If you want to keep working for your business, keep following God, right? So that's why we take the baptism, we sign that contract, and then we work as Christians for that life. Right? Mm-hmm. You understand? And I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, to just kind of go over this and see how Peter himself saw the baptism and being born again. It says, from there, I'll read it myself. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded for your faith and salvation, ready to reveal, to reveal, to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. It might be a bit tricky. What do you understand from this one? What do you understand from this one? Right, that's why Peter's happy, right? That's why he's writing in joy. He writes because it's so, at that point, because we were so far gone from being saved by God, what Jesus did, he brought us back, didn't he? That's why Peter's so happy to write this. That's why he's overjoyed writing this, right? Because we have a chance to live with God now. Because he loves us that much, he decided to still have faith in the things that we could be. When you realize how corrupt humanity has been, if you read the Bible yourself, you'll see how bad people can be, really. And for God to kind of still love us at that time, and then go and give his own life for us, that holds a lot to us. That's why Peter is so happy himself. Because he realized how bad, how, how unworthy we were to be saved by God. But he still went and did it because he loves us, right? That's the Father's love, that's the unconditional love. That's the love of God. It's the special kind of love that we should have for one another as well. We should always love each other, right? And we need to remember Easter is a kind of celebration that brings us together and gives us a chance to change ourselves and change for the better. We should always take Easter as a remembrance of what Jesus did for us. He went on the cross and he died for a certain reason, not for nothing, right? That's why I want all of you to remember. Easter wasn't for nothing. It was for a reason, yeah? Do you understand? Do you have any questions? No? Okay, I'll put this question. Oh, yeah. I think um, we need to talk a bit because nothing is true <coughs> and Jesus is really to our life. And um, most of the times, uh, everything like, um, it doesn't really give you the time of day. That's what Jesus is. That's a good way to think about it. What the egg kind of, for some people, the egg does symbolize the way the kind of baby chick come, does come out of the egg. It kind of shows the rebirth of Jesus Christ. And we did come out of the egg. 
and how we can come out learning before we get there. So that's one thing to think about in the last week. Yeah? And I'll pray to us on this. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm so glad you come to find us, Lord. Thank you for giving me this blessed opportunity to teach these children about your good news and the things you've done for us. Keep some blessings by all means and help us learn about you and help us grow in your faith and help us be born again and sign that contract, Lord. Help us find a place to be with you and hold on to you. Go through the hardest times, Lord. Keep some blessings on these children. Jesus, Amen. 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 Amen.